is a good one. <laughs> I'm Doug Glidden, and this is Comedy Crash Landing. Now, on the show, we invite local comedians to just chill out and relax and crash with us for a while and uh, hang out in a place they can feel comfortable. And with me, as always, is my uh, co-host, Matt Ravenscroft. How are you doing, Matt? It's Ravenscroft, but I'm Ravenscroft. doing awesome. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> it was pretty close. Now, uh, Matt, did you know I'm wearing my lucky underwear tonight? Did you know that? No, there's no way I could know Do that. Do you Doug. own a pair of lucky underwear? Do you have any underwear you designate as lucky? Uh, no. Now, I did not get them from Christmas, and there, may or may, I, there might be SpongeBob or Hello Kitty involved. I'm not sure. Which one is Would it? you care to guess? <laughs> well, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess Hello Kitty because SpongeBob is the easy answer. <laughs> now, did you get anything cool for Christmas? Got a bunch of great stuff for Christmas, Doug. I got another salamander. I got a diaper for my alligator. I got, uh, I, I got the biggest bag of crickets you've ever seen. Awesome. And all that stuff, it works into the perfect package. Cricket bats? Crickets. Cricket bats? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right now we have something, someone else, someone else here with us. It's our guest, Bill I'm McAllister. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky to have. Oh, we have a studio audience tonight oh, too. Oh, look at that! Now you're not strictly a comedian, but I do no. think you come from a funny place. You would consider yourself a Warren? funny, <laughs> funny no. man, uh, like a funny approach to your uh, comedy. Work. We'll say comedy. Comedy. That's the word. On air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the art of laughing. Comedy. Yeah. Matt, how long have you known Doug? Uh, every day I feel like not. I mean, he long botched enough. your name right off the bat. I mean, <laughs> that makes me question what exactly is going on. Jeez, well, this is our seventh show. Seventh show on the air. I mean, actually, our eighth show. Yeah, we did have one canceled due to weather. Believe oh. it or not, there was a power outage. That's right. That was uh, with Joel Frigmetti. In the middle of the Who's... summer, it was so hot, the air conditioners were causing brownouts all over. We couldn't keep the power on, so we lost a, a great show. Have you ever had a brownout in your lucky underwear? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's why they're lucky underwear, yeah, girls. That's you fell into the lucky. trap. There you that go. could not happen. Now, what does make them lucky underwear? Well, because good, uh, Don't be gross. good things happen. Don't be gross. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> good things happen. This is cable TV. Yeah. Yikes. Because <laughs> <laughs> good things happen. Happy things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, Bill, yeah. you uh, are an on-air personality, radio mm -hmm. personality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, well, although you're not a comedian, you did interview Larry the Cable Guy once. So I... I've interviewed Larry the Cable Guy, Jeff Other Foxworthy, comedians. tons and tons and tons, yeah. Jim Arbaugh, but he's more of a performance artist. He's funny without <laughs> trying. Yeah. He's funny without trying to be, and he's funny without knowing he is. He's he's not in on the joke, but he's funny. <laughs> Oh, he is awkwardly hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Could, can you think of a specific example or just, just in, in general? Uh, well, uh, it would have been last year, our, uh, our 18th annual Christmas show. Okay. And uh, we were talking to him about going in. They are playing in the Citrus Bowl that year. And uh, it had just been announced that uh, WrestleMania 90, whichever one it is, The Rock might be at, at WrestleMania. Oh. oh, I can smell what he's cooking. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, he... Um, Basically, we were sort of throwing it at him. Uh, you know, what if the what if it was at the big house? Actually, he called us back to suggest that. I got really? Him. What about he uh, back. about the? He goes, uh, but the funniest thing he said without trying to be funny was, uh, "What's wrong with a little wrestling match every now and then?" <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy you want spending the night with yeah, your uh, yeah. crew. Wake up like a half Nelson. Uh -oh. Yeah. But uh, now he's uh, he really is a great guy, but he is quirky beyond quirk. <laughs> so it's not just an act. He's just that way in real life. Oh no, it's uh, that's him. He's uh, he's a goofball. But yeah, we've uh, interviewed tons and tons of comedians. Used to do uh, a lot of them when they would come into town. We had a program oh, director their show. who. Do, pardon me. They would promote their show. Yeah, their show. usually get in on a Thursday, and we would talk to them that day. Sometimes have them on for an hour and just on and on and on, and just like Jimmy Dore, who I. I just think it's funny as hell. Uh, can I say hell? Yeah, yeah you can yeah, say hell. Okay. <laughs> okay. That just has the sense. Yeah, you okay. prefer. All right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tons of it. And I, I, I love it. Obviously, you guys are big fans of stand-up and improv also. But uh, sure. yeah, I've done tons of them. Who's your favorite that you had in? 
Oh, it's hard to say. Also, uh, one of J other than Jimmy Dore. Let's see. Um, probably Slappy White. You know Slappy White. Slappy White. That's old school. No, we never had Slappy White. <laughs> that's we never old had Slappy White. <laughs> is this from a talkie? Is that it's, the guy that rhymed all the time? Uh, no, that no, was Nipsey, Nipsey Russell. Russell. Nipsey Russell. Yeah, that was yeah. Nipsey Russell. Tiny Tim. Did you I ever always get Tiny go Tim get those Red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny Tim. No, never had. We did yeah. talk to him on the phone. Oh, really? But never had him in. He, of course. Known as being hilarious. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Just a, yeah. a downright a laugh. Right oh, that guy. boy. Uh, guys, there's, you know, it's like you have so many, it's hard well, to Well, one time one. you were, uh, they were filming the Batman Returns movie, yeah. and you were uh, complaining about Aquaman being powerless. And, oh. not, and the director calls in because they were Snyder. filming. Mm -hmm. In the area, and you were saying Aquaman is well, what's basically Aquaman a bitch, gonna or... like hit you with sardines or something? What's he going to do? What's well, his... he's going to lead you into water, and then you're in his house. And I'm not a strong swimmer. <laughs> I think most villainy happens on land. Though. I'd say 90% of all villainy. So well, pirates. That's why there's Don't only the one pirates, superhero though. for the water, though. You know, like, there's tons of superhero uh, for land. The Submariner. Is he in the, in the same universe as? No. Oh, he's Marvel. He is in water. Uh, case in point. Uh, okay, Different well, universe. But I didn't. I really didn't. I I didn't know Aquaman <laughs> was this invincible uh, sea creature. Well, he was quite upset though. The director. Calls Zack off Snyder and... happened to be listening to our show. He was listening every day when he would drive to the set. He would listen That's to the our director. Show. Yeah, yeah the movie, he did three hundred. Did Batman? Yeah. So he called in. And I didn't. We we're like, oh yeah, right. Zack Snyder. No, no, no. It's really it's Zack. And he was explaining to us why. Zack Snyder, or I'm sorry, why Aquaman was powerful. He was serious. And why he right. was. And so he made the movie as a huge fan of Aquaman. Yeah, the Batman was thing was just an excuse. Batman is just <laughs> well, he was just setting up yeah. the Justice League, which is the Avengers of the DC. Sure. So I think the, the less think, successful uh, Aquaman was only in it for like a second or now, something. Now, which one like is Ace and Gary? Which one are they in? Ace and Gary. I yeah. think those are Saturday Night Live is it? players. Yeah. They're not DC. <laughs> those are a cartoon. Okay. Robert Smigel cartoon. I oh, think. okay. Yeah. All right. It's hard to keep track of all of them. I don't know which ones which. There's so many universes. There's yes. so many universes. I mean, there's yeah. the Robert Smigel. There's the the Marvel DC. You know, all of them. There's also Snap. Mad Magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I grew up on Mad Magazine. I, oh, I loved Mad Magazine as a kid. Yeah. It was yeah, the see, first satire I'd ever you see know, that gap tooth. Pay face, and you know what? You're in for some great yucks. You yeah, I mean? absolutely. Funny stuff, for sure. Now, Bill, actually, I've been a fan for a long time. Mm -hmm. You started out on a uh, show. I don't remember their names. But it's Spider-Man. Let me talk to Doug. They're the, the D's Nuts guys, <laughs> those two. Oh, Kramer and Twitch? Yeah, Kramer yes. and Twitch. Yeah, Kramer and, and Twitch. And was that the first time you where you were producing, but then you sort of came on air? Yeah, I was, well, I was producing before them. I produced a show very popular, Ed Till. If you remember him at all, <laughs> no, no, I don't. you can hear from the screams in the crowd. Yeah, that everybody recognizes. Calm him. down, please. <laughs> uh, I was a producer for Kramer and Twitch, but I would go on and do voices and just right. They had general you on. Move ballery. I think one of those two didn't he become a financial? Didn't he? Doesn't he do a financial show? I think maybe Twitch. I don't know. I think uh, he was Mad Kramer. Money. I think he had a national. Mad money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that you're thinking of Jim Kramer, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. that's different that Kramer. <laughs> yeah, but that they would a... do throw them out Thursdays. Yes, they do all sorts of crazy. That was a pretty Which wacky was so show. Dumb. It was so <laughs> dumb. Throw them out Thursday. T O T. You'd write it on your car yeah. or get a bumper they... sticker to encourage ladies to expose their bosoms. And there'd be a sighting at a certain intersection. Yeah, and everyone would be on the radio. Just, oh, oh. <laughs> we got a what smattering, a smattering okay. from the crowd. All right. We had some fans, some big fans at Thursdays. They just start that one up again. Uh, <laughs> and guys would call and go, yeah, I just saw one. Sure you did. <laughs> of course you did. Of but people course. would drive there anyway, I'm sure. Yes. Just on the chance. Yeah. That's true. But we, I mean, it was great. That was when we were at, uh, our studio was at 12 in Greenfield. And... I'd, after Kramer and Twitch, I did a show, uh, Scott and Casey, great guys, but it didn't oh, I really, Scott and yeah, Casey. it was yeah. a little too they were serious. Kind of, they were, they were funny They were guys. really strict on their format. Every 30 minutes, yes. he would change and yeah. just not mention anything they did. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, I feel I'm faint. Do you feel that? And I don't yeah, think they, they really had you do many voices on Scott and Casey. That was no, and not Scott Casey. no. Mm -mm. Um, but uh, eventually went on to uh, Greg and Michelle, right? Right. 
Greg and Michelle. And that uh, did a lot of voices there. Really, I did, I did probably that's where I started doing more voices on the air. Yes, and, several, uh, what was one of your favorite characters? Ooh, well, I used to, uh, our phone screener's mother was British. Oh, uh, yes, Barb. I remember, yeah. So I would do Barb. And it was just, it was such a cluster of accents. It was Northern <laughs> England slash Scottish with Cockney it thrown in. Now, it was what so might that throat. sound like? <laughs> well, she would just say, she, it was all about using euphemisms for uh, body parts and such. And I don't okay. know what I can get away with. I'm not, <laughs> you can get away with anything you're willing to say right now. You well, our, phone, on the our radio. phone screener uh, uh, had large uh, breasts also, and in fact, appeared in a horror movie showing her boobs. Oh. And uh, so <laughs> she'd say, like, Fans of Thursdays. Stop showing everybody your jumblies, love. So oh, that's the wrong with the that. Yes, she looks like uh, she walks into the room. It's like a dead heat in the Zeppelin race. <laughs> Things like that. Uh, so yeah, she was um, she was uh, uh, rude. All of my characters, I think, have uh, uh, sexual hang-ups. Mm. They all they all tend to be degenerates and deviants. I don't know why. Now, what's <laughs> what's the uniting factor of all those characters that you do them? <laughs> There's got to be something else. Uh, there has to be. There's got to be probably something probably environmental. Else. Probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you take your Blend broken eight. heart and make it art? Mm -hmm. no. Exactly. Is that how it goes? Fix that frame. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, and then on to uh, Jay and Michelle, and then Michelle left, and it was Jay and I, and that's when Jay I became Towers, a co-host. Right. Yeah. right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did a show when we flipped over to the ticket. We also became the morning show there. And now, we, you were afternoons, and going to mornings, that's got to be tough. We were middays. Or middays. Uh, when it was WKRK, and then when the flip that's happened, we were the So that's got to be show. easy life. You show up at like 10 o'clock, and oh. two hours of show prep. And You're talking about doing middays or doing middays? That? Middays. Uh, and you usually get there about, uh, show started around 10, about 9.58, and uh, <laughs> just wing it. Just wing it. Well, we did wing it quite a bit. We would improv stuff all the time on the show. We used to do, uh, and every radio show does. People always say, oh, you ripped that off from Howard Stern. You got that from Drew and Mike. Everyone rips off everyone. Right, or sure. not even rips off. It's just, it's, you know. It may not be just on purpose. Funny just, you're just, something you think, just think of that's of funny that probably somebody else did. Right. Too. And we used to do Hollywood squares and just do, we'd each do, I would do most of the voices, but we'd each do different voices. And sometimes it would just be, some guy who worked at the Walgreens across the street who was a little, just seemed quirky, we would make him a character. Now, and just, what might that sound like? <laughs> I'm looking at a catchphrase. To be honest, I'm not. Uh, what was his catchphrase? <laughs> Give me my pen back. I don't know. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love it. That's a perfect <laughs> That's my pen. <laughs> that was always, because I mean, you'd walk away from the counter with his pen as you filled out your... Back in the day, kids' photos, you'd bring a reel to the drugstore, and then they'd develop it, and you'd bring pictures home. The more you know. The less smart you are, however that goes. So and then you uh, move to mornings, and that, yeah. that was that you're waking up at you never get 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning? Ne 4.59. You never <laughs> get used to it. You don't. You, you are on the road, usually at 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. and... You're done. I mean, your your show is done by ten. Usually, leaving work by about noon, and it sounds great. It's like, wow, I've got the rest of the day. Do you have to? Like, you usually do your nap next day, day. Show, show prep then? at night. Usually, at do night? it at okay. night. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's it, you talk to people who've done it for years, Mojo and or Jay, whoever else, and they'll tell you you never get used to it. It's such weird hours. Yeah. But uh, it's a blast. It's fun. Oh, I forgot to give you the warning. Uh, Matt and I are not licensed talk show hosts, and we did not pull the right permits. So, did we lose our license recently? <laughs> yes, not li in, in Michigan. We did in Michigan. So we're still cool in, in Kentucky, in some though. Yeah. Countries in some countries. <laughs> <laughs> Which country? Think of the Lakia, the things that end in Kia. In Kia, okay. <laughs> like Eastern All right. Europe, sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The sketchy. So, okay. Sketchy? But we do have a safe word for you, Bill. If we ask oh, you something that makes you feel uncomfortable, is it? bananas. Is bananas. Same. So if we go too far, if our hard-hitting questions are cutting too deep, oh, you, you can, can ask just me say anything. bananas. Oh, and fire away. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm good Bill, with what everything. makes you tick? <laughs> what makes me tick? Wait, Itching <laughs> powder. How do you juggle work and family? It's tough, uh, Matt. Uh, I have 13-month-old oh, twins. Oh, wow. 
and uh, met him at the landing strip. And no, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> Taranta, we need a drums. Uh, no, we, uh, my wife and I, boy and girl. So we, uh, our fam. It's oh boy. Does anyone else have kids? Anyone have kids? It's yes, tough. Uh, kids. Guys out there? Anybody There's with some... kids out there? <laughs> yeah. It's it's it is tough. It is hard. And with twins, there's no. Like we always laugh when people say that. Hey, we've got a child. We know what it's like. Please, have two, the same age. It is tough. But uh, no, it's not difficult. What else you got? What other I've hard got, uh, questions? I've Go got Doug. Irish twins, just a, and they are like. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna get them on strong, but they're only a year apart in school. You don't know when your children were born. <laughs> How far apart they were. Who cares? Do you know their birthdays? <laughs> details. Details. I mean, I know, I know the reference, I know Irish the twins. He knows that they belong to him. Well, that's a plus. <laughs> that's a plus. Had all the paperwork done. He's our dad. <laughs> Prove it. Okay, so you were at 97, won the ticket for Correct. six, seven years, or how long was that? Uh, was long. I was at that frequency, 97, well, won for, for 16 years. Uh, the morning show years. when they were doing sports. Yeah, that was since January of 2008, so yeah, about eight years. Mm -hmm. And the ratings are good. Great. They were doing good, and yeah. then uh, this past, right after Labor Day, they decided not to renew your contract. Correct. My contract was up in bananas. My contract <laughs> <No>. was... <laughs> no, I don't care. I was waiting for it. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't really get fired. They just didn't renew your contract. They didn't renew my contract. They also did not renew Sarah's contract. She was let go in the beginning of December. Hmm. Radio is a tough business. Radio and television in general. Oh, we know. Stockholders, they're all looking to cut salaries. Sure. They want... If you have a down quarter, they're not happy. They want you to show improvement every single quarter and if you don't heads will roll and it seems kind of like the dynamic of entertainment and all that has changed since like the 90s and oh very you know, there much were, so there were people like drew and mike very that were making so. multi-million oh, dollar contracts dick Purton, and dick all Purton of them and a bunch of those folks that millions were, yeah millions and now there's just not that that same draw for that well you've also got pandora mm -hmm. uh right Satellite radio. Uh, satellite radio, which doesn't take that huge a chunk. Right. Most people driving, especially with morning radio, most people are going to listen to local radio. Yeah. You're driving to a job that, you know, most people don't love their job. I mean, you like your job, but most people have a 20 to 40 minute ride to work. They want to hear local, relevant, funny. Their own sports. And that's what yeah. they want to hear. They don't care what's going on in New York. They don't want to know right. what's going on. They want a release from, you know, everyday life. So they want to hear local. So, and I'm a huge Stern fan, and I would listen, Isaac Stern, the violinist. Yes. <laughs> I would listen to uh, Howard Stern because I just think he's funny. Mm -hmm. But eventually I would put on Drew and Mike. Because right. I want to hear local. Right. I want to hear Mickey Redmond. I want to hear you know them talking to whoever they're you know. And that was uh, Howard Stern's claim to fame. He would go into a different city and take it over, but that never really worked. Detroit, Detroit. And never did in Detroit. And I worked at ninety-seven one when he was there. He is number one everywhere except Detroit. Drew and Mike were number one. Hmm. He couldn't because P Detroit is a different animal. And again, people want local content. Now, were they giving you pressure to be more sporty and less of the comedy? It seemed like they wanted to go into more sport direction. Not really, because our the rest of the the day, with you know Blaney Foster, Carson Anderson, um, they are more sports oriented, or some people like to say, orientated. Um, <laughs> oh, the correct word you mean? Uh, right, the right way of saying, it, especially oh, if you're going to do it that proper way. Words. Yeah. Uh, but we were supposed to be more of a general interest interest show because it is morning radio and people don't want to be hammered with stats and no one gives a rat's ass who's playing in double A that they might call up in September. <laughs> no one, you know who cares about that? Guys on the team and ga yeah. and guys who are. There's a reference in radio called P ones, like the diehard diehard. And sports radio has diehard fans. Oh yeah. But the giant pie of listeners. The hardcores are about that much of the audience, so you have but to be able to talk about other too. things. Yeah, they're the ones that care about you know who's coming up from Double A or who's uh, mm -hmm. you know, hey, it's uh, it's signing day. That's the one that gets me. Signing day. This guy's going to sign to go to this college. 
Well, half of them will never yeah. see the field. Who right. cares? <laughs> who cares? I don't know who they are. I couldn't care less. Good for them, but that's not entertaining to me. Yeah, stats are for dorks, right, Doug? <laughs> yes, sir. Seventy-three percent of studies say that's true. That is, oh, and then people get into the NFL combine. Like what you did there. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, in, in a lot of those shows where it's like a single person talking, they're counting a lot on somebody calling in and bringing them more yeah. to feed. Caller driven. Like Caller driven stuff. Right. So. But doesn't it get maddening that the same old guy calls about the same old lines. We got to oh, fire sure. the Fords. Yeah. That's who we need to fire. That's you get my the same. favorite. Favorite one. They should just sell the team. To who? Well, they're making lots of money. Why would they? Why would? And the Lions. People keep going, Scott. People go every game. Yeah. Forward down the field. Let's oh, get yeah. a new theme song. That one's what from 1934. What would that sound like? Forward down the field. Thank you. But I love when people say that. They should just sell the team. Why? You've got a really nice car, but I'm a better driver than you. You should probably just sell it to me. Right. Seems <laughs> like they're doing okay. Yeah, that that makes no sense. Have they made some bonehead moves along the way? I think Absolutely. So. Yes. yes. Drafting guys too high, one hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. But they just have bad luck too. They just have bad luck and just I mean, playoff you know, losses. Oh God, they're just. Did you see Saturday night's game, the Seahawks Absolutely. game? Yeah, yeah, through the tears. Even yeah. Chris Collinsworth was just like. <laughs> Lions fans have to be just pulling their hair out. To place this firmly in history, I'm going to say that the Lions just won their their Super Bowl, right? So <laughs> that places well, us right. <laughs> the season they honored the only team that won a, one playoff game. Yeah, it was a big fanfare, and you yeah. think it would be like the uh, Super Bowl champion. Yet we're there watching them every week because they only play 16 games mm -hmm. every game does legitimately matter yeah, yeah a lot and uh, so it is different football uh, the Lions have the most diehard fans of any of the teams in Detroit and they're the most frustrating and but people will keep coming back because you just keep hoping against hope this is the year but it's a lot like Toronto and the Maple <laughs> Leafs they're the most diehard yeah. hockey fans oh and, yeah they haven't won it since what I travel there for business, and they say, "Wow, you're so lucky you come from the Red Wings." And we go to the plant, and it'd be on the radio, yeah. like a, a baseball game here or yeah. something. Yeah, and they'll They're probably destroy hardcore. their town if they do win. So, <laughs> could you imagine if the Lions? That's what they say about the Lions. Yeah, could you imagine yeah. if they won the Super Bowl? Yeah, I don't know. And they had a parade. It would be, it, it would be bigger than any Red Wings parade ever. Yeah, it would be sure. bigger right. than any Pistons championship parade. Any of those things, if the Lions actually. Forget winning. If they went to the Super yeah. Bowl, people would, that would be insane. That would be crazy. Yeah, they rioted at the World Series 84. Yeah, Bubba flipping over the car, setting mm -hmm. it on fire. Oh, kids. Yeah, it was a great year, 84. Now, when you're, you're sports, uh, I guess Matt on, was born that year. On, 83. Oh, okay. On sports radio, yes. do you, when you watch a game, is it more like, you know, not for enjoyment? You have to work a little pay, pay, Do you watch it differently? I mean, uh, are you more relaxed now that you're well, off? I'm scorned now, so I hate sports. Um, <laughs> sports I mean, you stupid. know you're going to get asked a lot of questions about and people are going to call up, so you have to take notes or be um, meticulous, and it kind of takes the fun out of it. It does, and you, I will say that working there, you do enjoy sports less because you do, you're right, you have you to treat it as it's yeah. part of your job. Mm -hmm. You go to, you know, you do, and I mean, you naturally pay attention to the stuff anyway if you're a sports fan, so it's not that tedious or that it doesn't change it that much but right. you're commenting it out on it all the time so it sort of takes the fandom out of it but i'm i've always contended of anyone at that station i was more of a fan than i mean i'm not a booger eating sports guy i'm not i mean you know there are guys there who they can't talk about anything but sports oh, that is all they can talk about <laughs> but it gets it's after a while it's like just tedious can anything can you talk about anything else I mean, really. See, I think that would work more of a light entertainment. Like today, with the, um, the Golden Globes around last night, but the Lions also lost. But today on the 97 one, it was all Lions, Lions, Lions. Because it's their mentioned. first chance to talk about it. Yeah. Sure. And they should have. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 uh, there are days where, from start to finish, it would be nothing but one topic. Whether it was the Tigers, if it was some, you know, Pupu Grande, Jose Valverde. 
made some, you know, gave up a home run or whatever it was, that would be the entire show, and you would have no shortage of callers, and uh, and it was entertaining because everyone's on the same page and everyone is just right. aghast. And I'm sure today was a great show for them. But it does sound like you really wanted to get into Golden Globes. <laughs> yeah, yes. what do you want to? Who were your Meryl big, Street, huh? big snubs? Well, I'll mix it up. <laughs> I will big say, snubs. Meryl Streep had a pretty um, big oh, yeah. speech, uh, headline grabbing. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, what the a Donald Tweeted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, uh, overrated, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but I will say, and I, I love the Golden Globes so much better than the Academy Awards. I watch the Golden Globes every year. I think it yeah. is great. They're Everyone's tipping, drinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it is, I mean, it's not, oh, we went over and it's four and a half hours. It is three hours. Yeah, they went like four not minutes a minute, over. Yeah. yeah, not a minute over. And if they, yeah, yesterday, or I'm sorry, last night was a rarity because usually they yeah. are on to the minute. But I have to say, for the first time in a long time, I didn't know half of those movies. Yeah. I didn't know the TV shows. <laughs> and you have so many options now yeah. with, with television series. There, yeah. there are tons of good shows, but no one has enough time to see all of them. Right. I mean, I, I mean, do now because I'm not working. I barely caught up on this show. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. I've I heard it's pretty good, though. It's been pretty good, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so, a crazy arc in the middle, but. <laughs> so what's next well, for Bill McKay? power McCall outage. This is my big question. Yeah. So well, what's next? Like, oh. This is very dramatic. What's next for Bill McAllister now? Uh, have you ever thought of stand-up comedy? Have you ever? Uh, no, I. I mean, improv stuff I've thought about. Um, there's a couple improv or go comedy. Right in Ferndale, mm -hmm. familiar. Um, I mean, I've, I've sort of uh, thought about it, but I never really. That's I never took it that seriously. Stand-up. I think being a stand-up comedian would be the hardest thing in the world. It's scary. I w I can't imagine. Going up there and what right is that? now, all the be funny. on yourself, or uh, you're only successful if you're getting laughs. Right, you better be funny. Yeah, if you're sometimes not, you still get paid either way. I think. Also, it's okay. Well, well, you have to, some to of get, the pressure's off. Yeah. To get good, you have to bomb a lot. From what they say, right? Unless well, do you have any really upcoming good. gigs or anything you need to let us oh, know about? Brashness. What? You have any upcoming uh, gigs? Any irons any... in the fire, Doug? Yes. Yeah. Any. Uh, Scoops, any uh, um, a couple exclusives. things, nothing solid yet, uh, but a couple things are uh, are brewing like oh, in your hockey okay. underwear. All right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, like the hockey team. Hmm? Bruins. Bruins. Oh, very nice. Oh yeah. Sports. Yeah. Yay, sports. Uh, uh, love those stats, you know. Oh yeah. So, what's your favorite stat of all time? What's your favorite uh, number in sports? Geez, got to be 750,000. Points on the board, baby. 750,000. Yeah. What's that? It's a number. It is a good one. Love it. It's You're a great three set. quarters of a way to a million. That's real close to a million. Yeah. After taxes, though. Yeah, depends. It's not that much. <laughs> I mean, All right, well, thanks, true. Bill, for being here today. That and was it. Uh, that remember, was it, that's, it. Any that's it. Landing you, you can walk away from is in? a good one. The... Yeah, we're going to grab a galley. <laughs> Thank you, studio audience. Thanks to the studio audience. Live studio audience.